Previously on the bill. Do you made a mistake? You lied to me. You never lied to a copper. He's on the telly, eh, hey, Candy? He's a detective. I haven't been completely straight with you. But I never, I never went over to the dark side. Well, I've never questioned your loyalty, Stuart. Fiver says that's the disturbance. Another fiver says he's the one who called in. You took your time. Uh, good morning to you too, sir. I suppose we're going to talk to him. Oh, he don't need both of us, does it? I'll tell you what, I'll go and deal with the house and uh, you talk to our mate over there, yeah? Oh, thanks very much, Ben. Much appreciated, mate. Well, you'd do with him better than I would, wouldn't you? He's uh, more your generation. Ferguson, she's 19 years old. I found this in her pocket along with two £10 notes and a bank card. Now, we've done all the relevant checks and it turns out that she was listed as a misper over a year ago. Been no reported sighting since. Got print out the Merlin file for you. Oh, how was she discovered? Well, this guy over there found the body. Her and her friends were bunking off school. You better take a look at the crime scene. Back to leaving the way, please, girl. My pleasure, Sarge. Yeah, I'll give you not happy with the cause of death. He thinks it's suspicious. Could be an overdose, but there's no drugs paraphernalia. Oh, it's definitely her. My mum reported her missing 14 months ago. Her and her friend from school had run away from home. Her friend returned after five days. Couldn't handle life on the streets, I guess. And no one's seen Abigail since. Till now. It's interesting she isn't wearing any shoes. Oh, she's a junkie, isn't she? And she was using before she came in here. She wouldn't exactly be thinking straight. No, it's more the fact that the bottom of her socks are clean. Only if she walked in like this, her socks would be filthy. So what, you think someone's carried her here? That's a possibility. Well, another possibility is that a homeless person's found her first and has nicked him. What, but didn't take her money? OK, so, what, she's overdosed and someone's carried her up here and washed her hands there? OK, then, we'll treat it as a suspicious death. Is Abigail's mum's address in here? Uh, yeah. Well, can you two pay a visit for me? Sarge. Catherine Ferguson? Yes. PC Tony Stapp, PC Bengal, Sunhill. Could we come in for a moment, please? This is about Abby, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's not good news. I think it's best be done inside. Sit down. I won't offer you a cup of tea if you don't mind. I'd rather just get on with things. I take it you found Abby. And I take it that she's not alive. We found the body of a young woman, yes. And we believe that it is Abigail. I 
I'm very sorry. How did she die? We suspect it was a drug overdose. I uh, take it you're not surprised. No. Not really. Abby was in self-destruct mode before she ran away. My husband, Abby's father, died when she was 16. Heart attack. She didn't cope very well. That last year, before she left, we started going out more, getting drunk, and taking, I don't know what, anything to help her escape, I suppose. Would you like me to come and identify the body? That's what happens next, isn't it? Only if you feel up to it. Tony Stamp. Pissed off. Well, it changes things, doesn't it? Yeah, right. Do you want me to pass that on? Hey, look, we, we don't have to do this now. Yeah, I don't want her to be dead. <laughs> Yeah, OK, thanks. She's just gone to uh, freshen up. Is everything all right? Sergeant Wright on the phone. A crime scene manager has found an injection point between Abigail's shoulder blades. He thinks it's unlikely that she would be able to reach around to administer the dose herself. And also, more to the point as well, would she? They've also found bruising on both arms and on her lower back. There's also a large amount of skin debris beneath her fingernails. I think she put up quite a struggle. So you're saying this is murder? That's exactly what I'm saying. Monsieur, the body of a young girl's been discovered. Started off as a suspicious death and now looks like murder. I want you and DC Moss on the case. Briefing in five. Yes, go. Well, that looks healthy. Yes, I think I have had one too many last night. Too, too many, if I'm honest. Tequila's on a school night, they're never a good idea. Mind you, this would sort me out. Actually, I said that about the kebab I had at 3 o'clock this morning, but I mind, I could still eat a horse and chase a jockey. <laughs> well, that's gonna have to wait, I'm afraid. Double us on the case. Well, can I finish this first? Well, that's up to you. Might be a bit of a gory one, though. Okay, for those of you who don't know, Abby Ferguson was found dead early this morning. Now, the FME report suggests that she was forcibly injected in the back and died of a substance overdose. Now, we believe the murder took place elsewhere and the body was dumped in this abandoned house in Peckett Street in the hope that it would be there for some time until decomposition set in. Now, the FME put the time of death within the last two days, so we've got time on our side. However, we don't know a lot about this young woman. Abby Ferguson ran away from home about 14 months ago and none of her family and friends have heard from her since. Now, we do know from the track marks on her arms and legs that she was a regular drug user. Apart from that, what she's been doing over the last year, well, your guess is as good as mine. So that's our priority, to find out what Abby's movements have been recently and who would want her dead. Now, Uniform have been scouring all the local squats and hostels. Have we got anything? Uh, yes, sir, we've got one lead. PCs Valentine and Fletcher found a young woman who befriended Abby Ferguson briefly, but that was when Abby was first homeless. Her name is Jodie Chapman. Uh, they only stuck together for a couple of months, but Jodie claims that she does know who Abby's been staying with over the past year. Right, Steve, Stevie, can you talk to her? Uh, Jodie's currently living in a mother and baby hostel, so I'll give you the address, OK? Um, the other positive is a witness who lives across the road from where Abby's body was found. He says he was woken up about 3am this morning by the sounds of car door slamming. And when he looked outside, there was a white car parked. Now, he thought this was a bit strange, because he does know the property has been derelict for some time now. But uh, that's all. Right. Kezia, Max, see if you can trace this car. OK, let's get cracking. Jody Chapman. I'm DS Turner. This is DC Master from Sun Hill. Your colleague said someone might come back. That's to do with Abby, yeah? It is, yeah. You were friends, right? Not for very long, but we were friends. Where did you meet? On the street. We got on straight away. Considering what we were both going through, we had a laugh together. 
But you two parted company after a couple of months. Abby was into drugs. Nothing too hard, a bit of grass, sometimes whiz. It's not for me, but it seemed to do the trick for her. She met this junkie dealer, Danny Peters. He said he could put us both up in a house of his, rent free. I know. I said to Abby, life's not that simple, but she was keen to get off the streets. Right, so you moved in? That's when Danny started getting Abby onto the strong stuff. They'd shoot up together. Heroin. Where was she getting the money for all this stuff? Surely Danny wasn't giving it to her for free? Well, at first he was. There were a couple other girls in the house working for Danny as prostitutes. And that's what he had planned for me and Abby. Get us hooked on his junk and then make us sell ourselves to pay for it. Danny's Sarah's dad. It wasn't exactly planned. What happened? Had a bit too much to drink one night, and I can't really remember the details. A few weeks later, I find out I'm pregnant. He threw us out when he found out. He had no use for us after that. Well, you know what? Sounds like you were well rid to me. I struggled for a while. I was really lucky to find this place. Danny didn't just get me pregnant. When I was a few weeks, I went for a routine blood test. He called me in and told me I was HIV positive. So he had unprotected sex with you, knowing he was HIV positive? And, um... Is she...? No. Sarah's clear. So, um, Abby stayed after you left. Yeah, where's Danny Pieces now? I bumped into one of his girls, Tessa, about a week ago. I asked about Abby, but she said he'd moved them all out the old place. Unfortunately, Abby didn't manage to escape. OK. Thanks for your help. Good luck, Jodie. She's lovely. Danny Peters, where do I begin? He's got form for handling stolen goods, theft, ABH, dealing drugs, and just to top it all off, pimping. Lovely. Yeah, well, that's just the tip of the iceberg, Garb. According to Jodie, he's done a lot worse than that. It's obviously worth talking to. Yeah, going on past history, he could definitely be our killer. Well, according to the electoral roll, he's in a property on Downman Road, but it's unlikely that's where Abby was staying. Mm, intel from Crimin says that he's got property on Larkfield Street. Jodie reckons that this could be the place that he keeps his girls. So that's potentially our crime scene. Right, get out of Larkfield Street so this Danny Peters has got to say for himself. Yeah, and for the minute, you treat him as a witness. I know he's got a history, but now we know that Abby was a prostitute. Maybe it was one of her punters that gave her the overdose. <laughs> He wouldn't go missing, you know. Well, you've only got yourself to blame. Don't tell me you've never had a hangover at work. Actually, I haven't, no. But never? No, never. How'd you manage that? An immense willpower and dedication. Hello, mate. No one in. Oh, someone's playing that music. Actually, I don't think there can be. Maybe you'll have better luck. Yeah. See ya. How can he figure it out with police? Filth. Moss, filth. Oh, well, speak for yourself. <laughs> CCTV over there, we should get that checked out. Come on! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll definitely hear you know. Danny Peters. Who's asking? DS Turner, Sunhill. DC Moss. And what do you want? We'd like to come and have a little chat with you, if we may. About what? Come on, Danny, we know exactly what goes on in there, so don't mess us around. It's a nice jacket. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Fashion advice from a pimp. That's a first. So, what is it you want to know? Abby Ferguson. You believe she's been staying here? You believe right. So can you tell us when you last saw her? Abby, uh, yesterday afternoon. I left here about four o'clock. And you haven't seen her since? I only got back about half an hour ago. OK, Mr Peters. I know, call me Danny, please. Danny? Yes, Stuart. OK, I regret to inform you that Abigail Ferguson was found dead this morning. Suspected overdose. Sorry to hear that. 
I like Tubby. Right then, so you left here yesterday about four and returned eleven this morning? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell us where you've been during that time? Uh, I've just been at home, in my flat. It's on uh, Downman Road. Right, can anyone confirm that? Not really, no. I, I live alone. Making appointments for Abby last night? Our main focus is on Abby at this time. Well, I didn't set her up with anybody last night, no. But that wasn't to say they wouldn't have been uh, passing trade. What about regular clients, then? Anyone obsessive or dangerous? Well, Abby did have regulars, but nobody like that. I, I wouldn't have allowed it. Oh, that's very civil of you. What about names? No. I'm sorry, mate. I don't do names. Not with punters. Right, then. Can we have a look at Abby's room, then, please? <clears throat> this one's Abby's room. Sorry, was Abby's room. Thank you. Stay there. Abby's phone? I guess so. Anyone else here? Uh, yes, Tessa. Tessa. Tessa Smith. And uh, Nicole Johnson. Anyone in? Yeah, it's far away. I would have thought a man in your position keeps tabs on his girls. <laughs> no, it's not a prison, you know. No, it's not a holiday camp either, though, is it? Have you got a number for Tessa and wanted to contact her at some point? I'm afraid not. Right. Excuse me. Nicole, it's the police. They want to talk to you. Nicole, this is Stuart. Nicole, I'm Detective Sergeant Turner. I'm from Sun Hill. I'd like to have a word with you, please. Thank you. Right, sir. I'm waiting downstairs, if you like. Okay, let's get some CSEs down here and check out that CCTV across the street. Right out. What's this about, then? It's about Amy Ferguson. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we found a body this morning and. Well, we think it might be hers. So when was the last time you saw Abby? Yesterday. Sometime in the afternoon. Didn't see her last night. No busy. Here? Yeah. With clients? Can you give me their names? They weren't regulars. Okay. Was Abby here too? Yeah, I think so. Well, you think so? I wasn't exactly clear-headed last night. If you know what I mean. Don't know what Tessa and Abby were up to. So you didn't, um, see or maybe hear anything out of the ordinary? It's like I said. OK. What about Danny? Where was he last night? Last night? Don't know. Left gear about four or five. Don't know where he went. OK. Thanks for your help. See ya. Well, Danny Peters is exactly the sort of low life that we expected, Gov. Yeah, but at the moment we're not treating him or Nicole Johnson as suspects. Not exactly witnesses either, though, because Danny wasn't there and Nicole was out of it, so... Well, that doesn't mean to say that Abby wasn't killed there. So maybe this Tessa girl can give us a moment when she turns up. Right, this is CCTV outside Danny's place. Yeah, Gov. Nothing so far, but there's still a fair bit to trawl through. Gov, I think we might have something. This is the mobile found in Abby Ferguson's room. It isn't hers. It's registered to a guy called Jimmy Gibbs. Well, if Gibbs' phone was in Abby's room, it's pretty certain he was there recently. Now, there are two interesting facts you should know about Mr Gibbs. One, he drives a white Ford Escort. That's the same colour as the car scene where Abby's body was found. Exactly. And two... Thanks for taking him home to your parents. Hopkins, isn't that the guy that was hanging about outside Danny's home? Yeah. He did a runner as soon as we arrived. We just thought he was a punter, but he clocked we were police and... It did seem pretty edgy. I checked him out on PNC. As well as various assault charges, we've got him for curb crawling a number of times. And whenever we did, we picked him up for possession as well. Seems he's got a bit of a coke at it. Mm, well, we're really meeting some of Cammy's most eligible today, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, the coup de grace is about a year ago, he was arrested for assaulting a prostitute. Only she didn't want to give a statement, so he was never charged. OK, so what are we saying here? That, uh... Well, he went to Danny's, a bit coked up, got a bit carried away, a bit heavy-handed, and ended up injecting her. Well, that charge with the bruises that were found on her body. 
So maybe Abby was protesting and he thought he could calm her down by giving her a hit. Yeah, use his car to dispose of the body. Yeah, but surely somebody in the house would have heard what was going on. Well, not necessarily Danny. Their pimp wasn't there and Nicole was, well, not compass meant to so, so. Yeah, which leaves only Tessa Smith as a potential witness. And we can't find her. We don't even know if she was there. So, what are we going to do? We bring Jimmy Gibbs in. Arrest him on suspicion of murder. Get me in the interview room, see what we can get out of him. Then we need to recover the car, get it to forensics. I'll get onto uniform. Morning, gentlemen. Sarge. Looks like it's your lucky day. A bit of a gent, is he? Let's just say he has issues. So is Roger. You're getting like a house on fire, mate. <laughs> His car's still there. Right, this is the house, number 44. Mark, right, will you go round the back? We'll take the front. Well, well this should be fun, Mark. Brace yourself. In position of waiting, Sarge. What? Jimmy Gibbs. <laughs> Jimmy, let us see! <laughs> He's locked us in, he's making a break. Get round to the front. Ben, back door. Sierra Oscar from 275. Jimmy Gibbs heading north up Jessup Lane in a white Ford Escort. I don't believe it. Lima. I Five don't freely believe it. Uniform Lima. Had a circulate in Jimmy Gibbs's car. Uniform was searching the house now, and CSC's all on their way. Well, he's certainly behaving like a guilty man. Oh, God, that was a lab. They came up with something quite interesting, actually. They found fibres on Abby's clothing, which matched fibres on the rug in her bedroom. Now, CSEs who were working down at this abandoned house on Peckett Street, they also found a trail of these fibres leading from the downstairs to the room where Abby was discovered. Now, their thinking is that Abby was probably wrapped up in this rug, and then that was used to transport the body. So whoever killed her put the rug back in her bedroom? Yeah, and it also makes us pretty sure that she was killed in that house on Larkfield Street last night. By someone who had easy access to the property. Gav, you better take a look at this. I've been going through the CCTV from Larkfield Street last night, and this is just after 11. That's Nicole Johnson. And who's that girl? Maybe Tessa Smith, the other Tom. But although Nicole did say that she didn't see Tessa all last night, so... So she was quite clearly lying. Do you think Nicole could have been involved? I and mean, Nicole's together enough to think of something like that on her own, but uh, she could be complicit, yeah. Have you run any further on than this? Yeah, it doesn't look like she returned unless she used the back entrance, Gov. You know what, Gov? Maybe we're not the only ones looking for Tessa, though. Because what if she saw the murder, then? Kezia, okay, so see what you can find out about Tessa Smith. We need to find her. And I think it's time you to have another chat with Nicole, don't you? Yeah. That's you, isn't it? Yeah. That's me. And Tessa. Now, you said you were in your bedroom last night. Led us to believe you never saw Rabbi or Tessa. I forgot. Well, Tessa looks pretty upset, so why are you chasing her? It was nothing. We just had a little argument. About what? She'd borrowed something of mine, some air straighteners. I ain't giving them back. I got a bit tetchy. OK, Nicole. Something you should know, because our crime scene examiners found some evidence which proves that Abby Ferguson was murdered in her room. OK, so let's go over this again. We now know that Abby was killed in her room last night, which means you lied about a potential witness to the murder, which also means that you either did it and we should be arresting wasn't you. me. Or you know who did. If it wasn't you, then just tell us the truth. All right. I do know what happened last night. I was working. It was about nine-ish. And suddenly I hear this massive row coming from Abby's room. I go and check it out. It's her guy kicking off. It's a bit of a regular. Likes things a bit rough. Do you know this one, yeah. It was Jimmy Gibbs. Not the first time he's been a bit forceful. Is Danny aware of Jimmy Gibbs' violent tendencies? No. Jimmy's careful. Generally turns up when Danny's not there. So what happened next? I went and knocked on the door and asked if Abby was OK. She said she could handle it, so I went back to my room. Cool. The arguing carried on for a bit. And after a while, things quietened down. Later, when my guy left, I went to go to the kitchen. But when I opened the door, I saw Jimmy dragging Abby's body down the stairs. 
She were dead. You definitely saw it was Abby. Definitely dead. You're using a rug to pull her along. She won't breathe in. Thing is, Jimmy saw me. He said he'd do the same to me if I told anyone. That's why I didn't say anything this morning. Then what happened? I went back to my room. I didn't know what to do. I heard a car engine start and I looked out of the window. With Jimmy driving off. What about Tessa? Why did you chase her? Well, not long after Jimmy had gone, Tessa came to find me. She was in a state. She'd heard what had happened through the wall. She wanted to phone the police, but Jimmy threatened me. I wasn't thinking straight. Well, so you told her not to call? I begged her not to. I was scared. I'm sorry. You know where Tessa is now? No idea. But she got away, so she's safe, right? Stuart. Hi. How's it going in there? Yeah, just finished up some paperwork. Nicole okay? Mm-hmm. I know she could have come up with the truth a bit sooner, but that guy, I think he really got to her, you know. Mm, yeah, sure. See ya. Are you any closer to finding him? Got some promising leads. Good. Listen, I, I hope you get a result, man. That Abby, she's, she's just a kid. She didn't deserve all this. Danny, why are you doing this? Doing what? Pretending to care. I, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, you do. You're pretending to care about Abby and Nicole. From what I've heard... What have you heard, Stuart? You're getting young girls addicted to heroin, so they're forced to go on the game. You kick pregnant girls out on the street. You infect them with your HIV. Listen, man, I know exactly what you are, so drop the facade, because I ain't fooling no one. Thanks, Carl. Be all right. Come on. I'll see you around, Stuart. What was all that about? It's clearing the air. So she confirmed it was Jimmy Gibbs? Yeah, if only we could find Tessa Smith get to corroborate the statement. Hopefully Jimmy's not aware that we've got another witness. Cassia, where are you going? Tessa Smith, 17 years of age, reported as a misbut over a year ago. Apparently she started seeing this boyfriend, dodgy type, got her into drugs. She ran away with him. Now, Tessa's mum has never met this bloke. All she knew was that his name was Danny. Right, are you in need of some good news? Just a bit. But two of my officers have just spotted Jimmy Gibbs' car parked outside the Crown Inn. Apparently he's just sat there stoning into a bottle of beer, just about to make the arrest. Are you sure your officers can go up with Gibbs this time? Don't you worry about it. Right, can you two get ready to interview Gibbs? Go. Max, I want you to pay Tessa Smith's mother a visit. Now, Tessa might have called round there, but either way, we need to bring her up to speed on what's been happening to her daughter. Kezia, can you go through the names of Tessa's friends and relatives? See if she's contacted any of them. No. We need to move quickly on this. Jack Smith? Yes? Hello, I'm DS Max Carter. I'm from Sunhill Police Station. Do you mind if I come in? What's it about? It's about your daughter, Tessa. You found her? We haven't. We were actually wondering if she might have turned up here. No. Do you think I could come in? We're investigating the murder of a young woman called Abby Ferguson. Her body was found this morning. I don't suppose that name means anything to you, does it? No. Um, what's this got to do with Tessa? We believe your daughter knew Miss Ferguson. That they were living together in a house in the north side of Canley. We also believe that Tessa may have been working there as a prostitute. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's a lot for you to take in. She's 17 years old. At the moment, there's nothing for you to be unduly concerned about. But she's a potential witness, and that does put her in a vulnerable position. You haven't heard from her at all, no? No. I, I wish I had. OK. Well, if you do, I'll leave you my card. I'll be very grateful if you can give me a call. Thanks, and, and thanks for letting me know. No problem at all. I'll let myself. Well, it looks like the cavalry's arrived. Shall we? 
Alright, let's keep it calm here, Jimmy. Now do yourself a favor, mate. It's four against one. Okay, let's have it then. Watch. Jimmy Gibbs, I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Abigail Ferguson. Murder? You're joking, ain't ya? No, Jimmy, we only joke on a Monday. You don't have to say anything. My army defense, if you do not mention the question, something. <laughs> Okay, Jimmy, you've been arrested for assaulting police officers and as a suspect in the murder of Abigail Ferguson. So why don't you begin by telling us what you were doing yesterday? Right. Before we go any further, I want to make it clear that I did not murder anyone. If I'd known that's what the officers were going to arrest me for earlier today, I wouldn't have done a runner. It's my main concern now to do whatever I can to aid this investigation. Oh, good. Well, thank you. So, why did you do a runner? Uh, maybe I panicked. OK, so where were you last night, say, around 9 o'clock? Sure. Um, my brief informs me that you have evidence placing me at Larkville Street, so I assume you know what I was doing there. Yeah, but you can tell us anyway. I went to use the services. Uh, you went to have sex with a prostitute? Yeah. Yeah, do you know her name? Abby. And did you have sex with her? No, I did not. Why not? No comment. OK, listen, our FME said that he found scratches on your forearms when he checked you out. Where were they from? Oh, come on, Jimmy. We're all adults. We've seen your file. We know your form. You don't know nothing about me. Just be honest with us, Jimmy. I didn't have sex with her because she refused. Why? Because I'd had a few drinks and I got a bit carried away. What happened? Things got heated. Danny came up, told me to go and wait downstairs and he'd sort it. So I did. And? Well, I just sat there and waited while this blazing row went on upstairs. Eventually it went quiet and after a bit Danny came down and hands me money back, tells me it's off. Says he's sorry. Well, there's nothing I could do, so I left. I swear I did not murder that girl. Look, if I was going to murder someone, do you think I'd go and keep me nut down in a local boozer? I know I've got form, I know how this might look, but I'm not a murderer. So, Danny was at Larkfield Street last night? Yeah, he was there. How did he seem when he came downstairs? Flustered, a bit wound up. Where did you go after you left? There's another place I know. It's on Balding Lane. I went there, number 13. It's run by a woman called Jane Eaves. She had for me. So, Danny Peters was there last night. I knew he had more to do with this than he was making out. Hang on a minute, Sarge. Danny was there according to Jimmy Gibbs. You don't know he's telling the truth yet. Yeah, well, Jimmy seemed pretty convincing, didn't he? Well, so did Danny Peters. Look, let's just get his alibi verified and then we'll take it from there, yeah? Yeah, OK, but if Danny did do it, then he and Nicole are playing us for a right pair of fools, aren't they? Sarge, I thought you'd like to know. The officers searching Jimmy Gibbs' house have found a large quantity of coke. Reckon it's enough to charge him with supply. But that would explain why he did a runner. Yeah. Any luck with, um, Tessa Smith? So far, no. I've still got a few of the old school friends to try. OK. Oh, well, Kezzy, listen, can you, um... Check Jimmy's alibi for me. He said he was at that address from 10 o'clock last night till 8 o'clock this morning. Sure. OK, so, so Danny and Abby did have this massive argument about the fact that she wouldn't have sex with Jimmy Gibbs, all right? Maybe Danny stuck her with a needle, calm her down, make her go through with it. Well, and he gave her a bit too much. Yeah, maybe. OK, so if Danny's our man, how did he move the body because there's no vehicle registered in his name? Listen, can you run a, a Chris check and also check PNC, see if there are any white vehicles stolen from around Larkville Street last night? All right. So what's the score with Gibbs? Uh, well, we think Gibbs is innocent now, Gov. We uh, fancy Danny for the murder now. Have we got any evidence to put him in the front? Well, we're working on some forensics, but if we could just find Tessa Smith, now her statement could seal the deal. Well, let's see what we do, because we're not arresting Danny Peters on ifs and coulds. 
So, Kezia, where are we at with Jimmy Gibbs' alibi? It checks out, Gov. Jenny said he stayed the night, so there's no way he could have disposed of the body. Right, so we keep Gibbs in custody till we've checked forensics and interviewed him about the drugs. In the meantime, let's focus on getting the evidence that's going to help us unpick Nicole and Danny's account of what happened last night. Gov, I checked last night's Chris and PNC and it showed up that there was a Peugeot reported stolen from Carby Street, which is just around the corner from Larkford Street. What colour? White. I've passed the index on to CAD and they're circulating it. Good. Sorry to interrupt, I thought you might want to know. We've had a call from the Mother and Baby Hostel in Menworth Street. That's where Jodie Chapman's there. Yeah, some bloke turned up threatening her and her baby. She didn't want to report it, but the staff called it in. The description given matches that of Danny Peters. Right, you better get down there. You've got to trust us, Jodie. Oh, I'm sorry, but now you're here, you've got to help her. Jodie, tell us what happened. Has Danny Peters been here? Has he threatened you, asking where Tessa is? Yeah. And why would he think you might know where she is? Because she stayed here last night. She made his promise not to tell anyone. I'm sorry. Look, it's OK. Look, do you know where Tessa is now? She's at her mum's. Went there this morning. I said it was the safest place she could go. So her mum lied to us. Jodie, <laughs> does Danny know where Tessa is now? He had Sarah. I was going to take her away if I didn't tell him. It's OK. Stay in the Yes, so much. The hour off the hours and seven. Tony, get over to Tessa Smith's mum. Danny Peters could show his face there. All right, Jody. You've done the right thing. Mrs Smith, where's Tessa? I told the officer earlier. I don't know. We know she's here, OK? She could be in danger. Now, please, let us see her. Take downstairs when we go up. Yes, yeah, sure. You stay there. Tony, up here. She's all right. Yeah, she's breathing. See her, Oscar from 795. Ambulance required at number 10, Greaves Road. FEMA with head injuries over. Must have heard us coming. So, why did you lie to us about Tessa not being here? Well, uh, Tessa asked me to. She, she was scared. She said if people knew she was here, she'd have to move on. Don't you just cut her back? I, I didn't want to lose her again. That man who was here, is, is he the one you think murdered Abby? OK, let's send uh, Tessa down to A&E. Do you want to get in there with her? Still no joy. I'm just running out of the search teams to have more luck. Well, the governor's arranging some surveillance on Danny's flat in case he turns up there. They've got all the bases covered. Let's hope we find him. <laughs> just heard from Sergeant Wright. Found stolen white Persia that we think Danny used to dispose of Abby's body. Barton Street just found it. They're sending us to forensics now. Good. Well, the nurse says we can speak to Tessa now. Good. Hello, Tessa. How are you feeling? Better. You up to talking to us? We're not sure if that's the best. What do you mean? Danny, he knows where me and Mum live now. He said if he got any more trouble from the police, he'd know where to come. OK, Tessa, listen, I understand how frightened you must be, all right? But we're very close to arresting Danny Peters. Now, we already have some very strong forensic evidence against him. We also have a pretty damning statement against him, too. So all we need now is for you to put him where he belongs. But what if you can't find him or if he gets away? No, it won't happen. Believe me, it won't let it happen. OK, now, why don't you tell us what happened last night? OK, what you saw and what you heard. Do you mind, Mum? Well, it would help if she could speak freely. So. so, Tessa, tell us what happened when Jimmy arrived. You're in the room next to Abby's, aren't you? Jimmy was in a bad state. He's normally pretty wired. But last night he was going too far. I could hear Abby screaming at him to get off her. Eventually, Danny came up to try and sort it. What did he do? Mm, first, he calmed Jimmy down and told him to wait downstairs. But then when he was gone, Danny and Abby had this massive row. Bell? Danny wanted Abby to do whatever Jimmy wanted. No argument. Abby wasn't having it, though. They were really going at each other. OK, then what happened? Well, Abby had had enough. This isn't the first time something like this has happened. She'd been planning on leaving for about a week or so now. So she told him she wasn't putting up with it anymore, and that she was moving on. Danny didn't like that at all doesn't like not being in control. So, 
He told us he was staying and that he'd make sure she did as he asked. All I heard then was them struggling. I don't know what he was doing, but it sounded like they were falling all over the room. And then it went quiet. I heard Danny go back downstairs to Jimmy. And I was worried about Abby, so I went in to see if she was OK. So she was dead. So what did you do? Well, I froze. Then he came back and shouted at me to get back in my room. I didn't know what to do. I just cried. About an hour or so later, I could hear Danny dragging Abby's body downstairs. I heard him go outside, out the back. So I looked out my bedroom window. Nicole was there as well. And she was helping Danny put Abby's body in the boot of his car. And that's when I decided I had to get out of there. So I ran downstairs and out the front. Hold on, Tessa. Thank you. So what have you got? Gov, Tessa's statement tallies exactly with Jimmy Gibbs. Right, well, on top of that, forensics have proved that Danny was at the abandoned house where Abby's body was dumped. So if we get a similar result on the stolen car... Well, all we need now is the suspect himself. Sierra Oscar 55 from Sierra Oscar 6. Nicole Johnson's just pitched up outside Danny Peters' flat. She arrived a few minutes ago. She's got a minicab waiting. Do you want us to follow? Yes. Keep me informed. Sierra Oscar 55 from Sierra Oscar 6. Go ahead. Nicole Johnson has returned to Latfield Street. Gov, she could have picked up something for Danny Peters. She'll pass it on to him at some point. Stay where you are, Kezia. Gov, we'll head down there. If anyone's bringing in Peters, it's me. Stuart's on his way. Sierra Oscar 5 from Sierra Oscar 7. Any sign of Nicole? No, Sarge. All right, so uh, head on down to Dalman Road. Join up with DS Carter on the way here. All right. Sarge. So have you really never had a hangover at work? Oh, no, there was once, um... Yeah, but I was out with the DI the night before getting drunk, so I don't really count. Apart from that, how come? I'm just a really big drinker and care about my work. Oh, you're saying I don't? No, 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 no. I'm just... I just like being good at what I do. You're a control freak, you mean? <laughs> I like being top of my game. No, everything about you screams control freak. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. You can't stand not having everything just so. Isn't that right? Yeah. That's why you don't drink. All of which, in my book, makes you a solid gold, bona fide control freak. I'm right there, aren't I? Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you here. Yes, yes. Here we go. Well, it's Stevie. The radio is a base for immediate backup, will you? Nicole Johnson going this building over here. We think she dropped something off for Danny Peters. Got a cab waiting for her. We're going to go in and arrest her and then come back for Danny Peters, all right? Let's go. Hey, step out of the car, please. Step out of the car, Nicole. You wait there, mate. Thank you. Stand over there. Right, Nicole Johnson, I'm arresting you. Pretending to pervert the course of justice. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. I haven't done anything. That's why you didn't help cover up the murder of Abigail Ferguson. I had no choice. He made me. Yeah, you saved that for the interview, all right? Where's Danny Peters? He's on the second floor. Thank you. Cover, put her in the back of the van. Now, you two stay here, block the exits. Oh, no, Danny, I ain't gonna help you, mate. You know what, I'm in a bit of a quandary here, Danny. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I don't know what to arrest you for first. I mean, is it theft, supplying drugs, pimping, or maybe go straight in with a murder, what do you say? You know what, you're a scum, mate, you know that? All right, Sarge, let's just make the arrest. Yeah, come on, Sarge, let's get it over with. Right, on your feet. 
I'm going to do more than think about that. Oh, what's she doing? What's she doing? What am I doing? I'm going to teach you a lesson, you smuggler. Danny, please, stop. All right, all right, Sarge, just calm down. Danny, listen to me, right? Look at the situation you're in here. You're in enough trouble as it is. You don't want to make things worse for yourself. No, you're right. Please do. I want to make things worse for me. Oh, Danny! Oh, my God, please. Please, Danny, get out. All right, all right. Get out. Next time oh, on The Bill. I need an ambulance. Oh. Can't find a pulse. Stuart! With a minister of narcosan, it doesn't seem to be having any effect. Danny Peters is saying that the needle he used on Stuart was dirt. We'll find out if Stuart will be OK at the same time tomorrow here on ITV1. And more drama to come tonight as the fight gets really dirty and Mal goes all out to sabotage Karina's acts. Rock Rivals is next. While well, wisecracking Eddie Murphy is a bored African prince defying his family and coming to America. That's our movie starting on ITV2 now.